Hello my students. This is my first time doing a vlog, so I hope I get everything right. Um, just want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I would like to say that uh, I'm very pleased with each and every one of you. Thank you for allowing me to teach you. And in this uh, vlog, I just like to go over some points, just some reminders for you as you go through your uh, Christmas period and uh, on to uh, 2022. Let's hope that the new year will be a good one for all of us. So without any further ado, let's get moving. So. We are all learning piano, myself included, and the most important thing or the most scary thing for most students is the thought of practice. Uh, a lot of students think that learning the piano involves an enormous amount of practice. Well, it in some cases it does, but in most cases if you are smart and you are practical, you can get by with, you know, just some practice every day. Uh, think of playing and practicing the piano. Think of, of the learning process as uh, you're getting a pet, yes? Um, you get a pet dog or a pet cat. The, the pet doesn't expect you to be uh, lavishing all your love and attention on it, on you know every moment of your or, or every waking moment. So occasionally you'll play with it, you know, but other times you'll have other stuff to do. You're busy with work, school, your office, uh, and so on and so forth. So it, it's the same with piano, or to put it in another way, it's sort of like, you know, we, we brush our teeth every day. We, we don't think about it, but it, it becomes a routine. So if you make your practicing a routine, it will be much easier. Um, and there's no set routine. Some some people like to practice in the morning, some people like to practice in the afternoon, some people like to practice in the evening, or it depends on uh, when you have the time. So the important thing is you have to make time for practice. Right? Practice does not involve hours and hours a day. It can be as short as maybe 10 minutes a session. So I myself, when I practice the piano, I rarely go more than 30 or 45 minutes tops. And sometimes my practicing is as short as 15 minutes. But then we come to the next thing, which is very important. The next thing that's very important is the quality of your practice versus the quantity. So. Again, a lot of students feel that, oh, uh, quantity is much more important than quality. Well, I'm afraid that's not really true. Quality is much more important. So let's say if I just do a 10 minute session today, but I give it all my attention, my focus, and I'm sort of in the moment, I I know what I'm practicing, I know what I expect from myself, and so those 10 minutes are spent in a very, very uh, worthwhile manner. If you don't, and you are just practicing just for the sake of practicing, or you know, just to not feel so guilty, then even if you did an hour or two, uh, you would not get much from it, all right? So, make sure that quality plays the top role in your practicing. So, for myself, when I practice, I like to focus on small chunks. 
All right. Something as small as four bars or four measures. Uh, maybe playing each hand separately a few times. And then trying to put the two hands together into a whole unit and not being frustrated when mistakes crop up because mistakes will crop up. Uh, the question is when and not if they crop up. You have to try and be very patient with yourself, all right? Don't beat yourself up. Uh, adult beginners are well known for beating themselves up whenever they make a mistake. Even if it's just one single note mistake, they beat themselves up and they get frustrated, they get angry. Uh, you know, that, that doesn't make your practice enjoyable. Just accept the fact that practicing will involve making a whole bunch of mistakes. And I can't remember who said it, uh, but that person said that if you're not making mistakes, you're not trying hard enough, which I tend to agree, yes. I myself make a whole bunch of mistakes when I'm practicing. But the important thing is to know where the mistake is, try to correct the mistake as soon as possible. Do, do not uh, ignore your mistakes, all right? Another thing is that as as human beings, our moods, our personalities change on a daily basis. Some days we wake up and we are just like raring to go. Other days we wake up and we say, no, not practicing again, or no, it's, it's my piano lesson tomorrow, oh my goodness, you know. Um, you have to accept that fact. Um, I, I would not say that you should not practice every day, but if, if you do it just for the sake of, of telling your teacher that, oh yes, I've practiced every day, but during those practice periods, you are, you're not totally concentrating or you're not focused or you're not in the zone, uh, it's pointless. It's much better um, if you can do at least, I would say, three or four days a week. That would be quite a reasonable uh, amount of uh, time to do some practicing. Um, it's also the same as exercising, you know. If, if, if you think that just by going to the gym for a day, a week, you're going to improve, well, uh, I'm sad to tell you it's not going to happen. And, and, and so it's the same with practicing. If, if, if you just practice one day a week, and from my experience I know most students practice on the day before their piano lesson, which is not so good. Um, you know, it, it, it's not going to bring you any fringe benefits. The, the, the best thing to do is to, okay, maybe practice alternate days or practice whenever you can. Sometimes I practice 10 minutes, sometimes I practice 20 minutes. Uh, another thing I uh, personally do is that I make it into a routine, which means like usually after dinner, after, uh, you know, I'm settled down, I've had my shower, then I, I would probably go to the piano and do some practicing. And naturally, of course, you need to start off with some warm-ups. It's not so advisable to just sit down at the piano and start from cold, you know, and, and launch into some Beethoven or, or Schubert or Chopin or whatever. It's much better to do some scales or maybe some Hannon, some Schoenie, I myself, I'm fond of doing, picking out one Hannon, one Hannon or two, and then trying it out at slow speeds. Maybe I'll start off at, you know, crotchet or quarter note, go 60, and then work it through, 
If everything's okay, then I'll increase it to 66, I'll increase it to 72, and finally 80 or so. I find that gets the, the fingers all warmed up, especially on winter mornings or winter evenings, for that fact. So that's just my two cents worth, yes. Another important point to realize is that even though you might be a beginner when you are practicing at home, you are actually teaching yourself. Right? Uh, everybody is in the same boat, even the, the advanced students. Maybe you, you have your piano teacher for like an hour a week, but you know, besides that, you're on your own when, when, when you're practicing at home. So you have to teach yourself properly and carefully. You, you have to stay very focused. You have to tell yourself things like, oh, measures 1 to 4 repeat themselves in measures 12 to 16. Or, oh, this left-hand figure keeps repeating itself. Or, you know, you know, stuff like that, because music, as I, I've told you many, many times, has a lot of repetitions. It's, music is essentially chock full of patterns. So you've, you've, you've got to see it, and you've got to realize that, oh, for example, uh, these four bars always begin with C in the right hand. That, that makes your, your practicing much easier. And you've, you've got to ask yourself simple basic things like, Oh, what note is this? Oh, where is this right hand note going with, with the left hand? Um, okay, so now you, 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 you have an idea of the structure of the piece. Even, even if it's, it's a very simple piece like Happy Birthday. Uh, it doesn't have to be a hard Chopin attitude before you, you do that. Uh, if you do that during your beginner days, you will find that it, it becomes a, a very good habit. Okay, It sticks with you. And another thing is that slow practice is not something that you should frown on. Slow practice is very, very essential if you're going to learn piano well. All right. And when I say slow practice, I mean it's slow enough that you're not making any mistakes. The one fault that I see a lot of beginner students do especially is that they like to go fast. All right. Now, if you go fast, just just imagine a, a person who has just passed his or her car driving exam. It, it is speeding down at 100 kilometers per hour. It, it's a recipe for disaster. Okay, doesn't matter which country you live in. Uh, it, it, it's a recipe for disaster because sooner or later you're going to crash and burn. It's the same with practicing. Although, as I like to say, practicing the piano is much safer. If you crash and burn on the piano, it's not like, you know, someone's going to die or whatever. But still, if you crash too often, you are going to get very angry, you're going to get very frustrated, you're, you're going to get very disappointed with yourself. And the main reason is that you have not done enough slow practice. And that's where this guy here This is called a metronome, all right? This guy is your best friend. A lot of students are very scared of the metronome. A lot of students hate playing with the metronome. But the metronome is essentially your, your, your musical friend on, on your piano journey. So. If you find that you can't do slow practice, you, you keep on speeding up, use the metronome, all right? Maybe uh, consult with your teacher about suitable metronome speed to start with, 
Okay, so maybe I'm, I'm going to start at quarter note or quarter equal 60 and eventually I'll get up to, I don't know, my cruising speed is 96. So, you know, all the steps in between. And that's the thing about practicing, um, which brings me to another thing. Namely, okay, let's say if, if I'm practicing this particular section, all right, and okay, my piano teacher said I should practice slow, uh, and he said, he told me to go at 60 quarter notes or 60 crotchets. So I'm, I'm going to practice that section like five times, 10 times. How boring can that get? So what you, you should do is try practicing the first few times at that very slow speed, say 60. All right, you find that 60 is now comfortable all right, for your separate hands and for both hands. So you can up it a bit, maybe go to 63, 66. Does that work? Okay, if that works, no mistakes, you're not crashing, keep going, keep going 69, 72, all right? Until you get to your, your goal, your, your, your cruising speed. That is what I do uh, for my own practice as well. So I hope that this relatively short video has given you some ideas. Um, I, I try to motivate my students, uh, try to make the teaching process enjoyable, but in the end, you are your own teacher. All right? Do remember that. And if you do have any problems, please don't hesitate to share it out with me and I'll see whether I can help you with it. So until the next time, happy practicing. Let me know your, your progress. Let me know your frustrations and, and we'll, we'll work it out together. All right, happy practicing. Bye.